Well, what a great treat I've got today. Yes, I'm with Gerard and Kathleen from Vital Signs Consulting. We're going to find out all about this business and what you guys are up to and what you've got in store for your clients. Welcome to the show. Thank Thanks you. so much. Now, I was really intrigued because I read your headline that says, Giving People the Confidence to Be Their Own Brand. I don't think I've ever seen a business coach or coaching company say those words or in that manner. Where do you come up with this from and what is it all about? Well, I think in today's market, personal brand is really the new currency in many ways. Yeah. And mm. I think many people just don't think of themselves as a brand. And so when we first started talking about people being their own brand and started discussing it with friends and families, we realized that a lot of people just didn't have the confidence mm. to say, yeah, I, I could be my mm. own brand and I get that what I'm doing on social media is really sending a message. Mm. And that's where mm. we, we came up with the idea of, of giving people confidence to think of themselves as a brand. Mm. Uh, that's also, if you do business, people do business with, with a person. Yes. Um, and how you present yourself on social media, I think people can make a connection. Yes. Um, so it's important to, to manage your, your personal brand. One thing I will say for myself, I'm finding the young people, whether they're managing their brand properly on social media is another question, but they seem to have great confidence in just grabbing phones, live streaming and doing all yes. this. And I'm finding, and I'll offer myself in this, the, the generation of my era tends to be a little bit more hesitant mm -hmm. or lack a little bit of confidence in this in this area. Is this social media and being able to live stream and do videos like what you guys do, this is all part of that new confidence that you need to better be a brand, prepared to put yourself out there? Yes. I think it is, absolutely. Mm. And I think it's it's quite scary for those who have not grown up as digital yes. natives. Yes. You know, certainly the young people of today, it's just so natural. They they don't understand that a telephone and a camera used to be two completely separate <laughs> objects. But in today's market, it's, it's really important how I, you portray yourself. I have to laugh. My five-year-old grandson was with my wife, and he said, oh, can I play some games on your phone? And, and she said, well, my phone's got no games on it. And he said... <laughs> What's the point of having it here? <laughs> we didn't have phones like that when we were growing up, but yes. No, so it's very, it's very confronting um, for those of us who aren't digital natives to mm -hmm. think about, I guess, promoting ourselves as a brand because it almost mm. feels a little bit maybe like bragging. Mm, and yet yes. how you portray yourself on social media is very important and yeah. it's something that some people are aware of other people aren't aware of it but I think talking with business owners meeting with business people you can't help but realize that everybody has a social media presence mm. and that needs to be managed yes. mm. now Kathleen says something really interesting then I, I guess my generation relates to it that we get on social media we say we're bragging Yes. Is this an emotional obstacle you find as, as a way that has to be broken down to get this confidence? Yes, I think that because that's the way you, you, you grow up. Mm. Um, and the, the younger generation, um, they can do whatever they want. <laughs> you know, yes. um, I don't think they've got the rules that we have when we were younger. Mm. Um, they've got much more accessibility to, to social media than we had ever had before. Mm. They have accessibility to, to knowledge that we didn't have before. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think all those things just play a big role in, in managing your, your, your brand. Yeah. But also the younger people, I mean, they're worth a billion dollars by just having their brand name with, with cosmetics. Yes. You know, but that is for that specific type of age group. You know, they don't cater for the older generation. Mm -hmm. So they manage their brand for the younger generation. You know, when I grew up, when I first went into business, I was always to write to-do lists. These are the lists you're going to do tomorrow, these are the lists you're going to do the next day, blah, 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 blah. Now I'm finding this new generation, this new culture is coming through. As well as writing that, you have to write a to-be list, what you want to be, and paint this picture for yourself, the, the two are marrying, marrying up. Well, how are you finding, is this what you're finding out there? This is what you teach people? Yes. I, I think there, there's a, there is a clear relationship between the two. I think mm -hmm. now more than ever, yeah. um, 
reaching our potential has become a lot easier in some mm. ways with the types the type of access that we mm. have through the internet and so it is it's not only about what you want to do but it is about who you want to become mm. and part of that is very much I guess part of what we discuss in terms of your personal branding and what are your values Mm. What is what is your promise to the market? How does your personal brand and your business brand relate to each other? Because the two are quite different. Mm. Very interesting. Uh, when you're talking about this, and we're talking about what people want to become, Gerard, and you've had a lot of experience. You've run with different businesses. You're a manager, very young. You're a captain in mean, the reserves, very young. Uh, were you? Have you taught skill sets back then of what you needed to be, what you needed to portray that you think you brought forward that's helped you now? I don't think as much as today. Right. Um, I think today to have a mentor or, or having a coach is much more uh, prominent than, than before. Mm. Um, and I always I wish I could have, just take time, 20 years back, you know, <laughs> and then do things differently. Um, yes. And manage my brand much better than than I had. Mm. You know? So yes, I think I think we have to be aware of of, of what you do every day yes. with your brand. You say about going back and changing things. I guess we all reflect on that sometimes. But you guys have got a brand. You're very very strong. You have really good strong personal brands. Each of you in a really strong business brand. Someone looking and saying, "Well, if I just build confidence and got my own brand." What have you found having that? What does that give you by having a good brand, do you think? I think it changes the power dynamic. Mm. And I think maybe that is something to do with, with our generation. Mm. Um, but certainly viewing yourself as a brand, knowing what you want to achieve, what is and is not acceptable yes. to you, uh, that puts you in a very strong decision-making mm. position. So you're, you're not feeling, for example, that you need to take on particular clients or needing to take on a particular task just because they're there. You're really matching it up with, is this something that resonates with my brand? Wow. Um, well, so it, it definitely does change the power dynamic yeah. in many ways. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Do you find this, Gerard? I, I just feel when, when you are branded, um, you, even in, when you negotiate, the, the powers change. Right. Um, when you are branded, people come to you yes. and ask for advice or ask for help. Yes. Where if you're not, you nobody knows about you. And being branded, it really feels good that you know that you have knowledge and you have skills to help other people. Mm. Um, yeah. We're going to talk about it in more depth. But before we go to a break, I'm going to ask the question I'm sure a lot of people are asking now: Is it difficult? Is it difficult to decide what you want to be or know what you want to be and then actually do it? I don't think it's difficult. No. I think it's I think it's actually a really enjoyable process. Yeah. But I think it probably is a little scary, a little bit overwhelming in the beginning. Mm. You know? I could relate to that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. But if you are proud of your values. And so then it's easy to live your values. Yes. Um, and it's easy for other people then to relate to your values. Mm. So, yeah, I, I really find having a plan is, is really good. I will ask something on that, because some people will say, well, you use those words for yourselves, and you've got a very nice, strong brain now, and a great company brand that's even getting stronger every day. Mm. But I will say, mm. you also got mentors and coaches behind mm. you, and how important has that been for you to really achieve and be fulfilled to the level you've got? Oh, for me, this is the accountability. Right. Um, you can't lie to yourself anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, and also you have to take ego out of the equation. Oh, that's interesting. But I think what's really important, when we started initially, mm -hmm. despite Gerard's history of coaching, I think yes. we convinced ourselves that because the two of us were in the business together, that we would be able to hold each other accountable. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> we learned that was not the case. Yes, that's not the very case. Quickly. No. You, you right. cannot self-coach. No. Um, and so 
it's been really important to mm -hmm. have coaches behind us. That that has been fundamental oh. to the entire process. It's Absolutely. interesting you mention that because I'm sure people watching say, "Well, that's all right," because it's truly. No. Oh no, we cannot help each other. No, we cannot no. hold each other accountable. No. We've tried. Having, <laughs> We've tried. <laughs> you know, just this having a coach for us, it, it means there's somebody else that can see something that we can do some, some maybe differently. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know that we didn't see because we inside a box. You know, and your coach is standing outside looking at this frame. You know, and we inside the frame. So it makes a huge difference in. in did you think about that? No, no, we didn't thought about that. Yes. And if you do it, what do you think the results will be? Oh, we didn't thought about that. And, and to an extent, two heads are better than one, but when yeah. you get stuck, it's almost as though oh. you get doubly stuck. Yes, doubly stuck. <laughs> so having a coach, you could come in and go, all right, and stuck guys, us. Yeah, yes. yeah, um, yeah. You're too much inside your own head yeah. right. um, has been incredibly valuable. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's sensational. Don't go anywhere. You don't go anywhere. We're going to take a little break and we're going to come back with Kathleen and Gerard and more about having the confidence to become your own brand and what it will actually give you. But we're going to go into how you do it, the actual practical steps. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>